Can you hear me in the back? Hello? Good. Okay, we're on. So the Arvin said something about, uh, you know, what, uh, when he gets on the airplane, he looks at Yale, he feels young. Um, here's something really scary. When I first met Yale, he was much, much younger than I today. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give you a perspective. <laughs> and I'm also known as the husband of Yale's mother. For those of you who are thinking some other ways, you're wrong. <laughs> but I challenge you to talk to Yale later today to find out why Wen Mei Hu is the husband of Yale's mother. <laughs> the topic was rethinking computer architecture, but uh, I think really what I'm trying to tell you is a few things that Yale and I debate about in Samos and some other places. And Yale, I think you recognize this, this place, right? How can I give a talk <laughs> at Yale seminar without showing this, right? <laughs> so this is, you know, well, even though I cited this from Yale's uh, book with uh, my dear friend Sanjay Patel, which I think he is here. Sanjay, can you raise your hand? I think he's right there. Yes. But um, Yale has been showing this picture with his hand-drawn uh, slides ever since day one, uh, when I first met him at, uh, in grad school. And one of the things that many, of, many, many of you said, uh, including, you know, Gurry and um, previously, is that application developers should not deal with the variations in hardware. Do not bother the programmers. And I think this, you know, there's certain wisdom to it. And um, I'm going to use a few slides to, you know, to show what uh, Yale has taught me in, a few, uh, in the past few years. Few meaning maybe 30. So here is the famous hand-drawn picture that um, uh, several of the previous uh, speakers uh, mentioned. Um, just to set the record straight, just before we published the paper, uh, I don't know how many of you know the process in 1984. Um, you know, when we started to prepare this uh, paper, uh, we were using TROF. And um, you know what, we're cutting and pasting on the mat. So you know what, the, when Yale started drawing the pictures by hand, you know what, I humbly offered to use MacDraw to draw a much more efficient and much more pleasing picture. But Yale insisted that uh, this is going to be the masterpiece 30 years from now. And I think he, he was right. He was, uh, in, every time I give a talk on this topic, you know, I'm very proud to show one of the very few hand-drawn pictures that we can show from our publication. I don't think I have too many of this uh, ever since I uh, started the uh, career in uh, Berkeley, uh, uh, Illinois. So one of the things that uh, we, we had in HPS, which is the vision in 1985, was that we wanted to have one static program and um, ma mainly, you know, I would say reflecting an algorithm. And then uh, we want to be able to deal with many, many different resources, resource configurations, types of function units, number of function units, iFetch bandwidth, memory latencies. You know, all these variations should not become a bother to the programmers. So what we did was we, you know what, uh, we kick around ideas, we, we look at all these things, and then we started to say, well, you know, there's some very powerful kind of things from the lessons that we can learn from IBM 36091, and there are many, many powerful lessons that we had from the literature. But you know what? Let's try to put it all together. Let's envision a real system, a system that will work. So we figured that um, there are a few things that we got to get right. One is branch prediction. And you know, I think Yale, to Yale's credit, he worked on branch prediction for a few years after that. And um, you know, a resource mapping. You know, how do we map from virtual registers to, <coughs> to physical registers so that people don't have to explicitly bother with some of these detailed storage manipulation in the hardware. Restricted data flow are to Arvind's credit. You know what, the, we, we read Arvind's papers and then we said, okay, you know what, that's a very, very interesting idea. But you know what, um, Arvind was going way too far. You know what, uh, maybe if we can apply it to a, a little bit more restricted pa uh, paradigm and we can build efficient hardware out of it, that's a fantastic idea. And you know, sequential retirement, how do we make sure that the programmers eventually see 
a simple picture that the debuggers will work on, right? So you know, we, we said this is a you know, reasonable idea. And we you know, proudly presented at Micro. And honestly, if we submitted that paper today, the paper will be rejected outright, OK? It, um, you know, for those of you who understand the, you know, the review process, I really think that back then, the atmosphere was a lot more friendly to some kind of host system idea where we have plenty of hosts. We have plenty of things that we did not prove. We had to prove these things much, much later on. But you know, the community accepted the paper, and then you know, 30 years, you know, almost 30 years uh, after, we're here showing Yale's hand drawing. You know, so the, it's something that I would like to reflect as the first point I want to say about rethinking computer architecture. Are we running our conferences in a way that will be really, really inducive in future and innovations? Okay, so I, I want everyone to think about that. So there are a few lessons we learned. From um, you know, from uh, building the HPS uh, kind of microarchitecture, and uh, you know, obviously there are many, many things learned beyond these two things. But uh, you know, industry built processors, and uh, we know that pretty much all the processors are built in out of order execution style these days. But um, there are two things that are particularly interesting to me uh, from a kind of a research point of view. One is parallelism and communication costs motivate algorithm changes. And this is stronger than I envisioned in 1985. Every time we, uh, we look at any kind of architecture when there's enough parallelism involved, when there's enough communication costs involved, people start to write code very differently, and mostly in the library domain. If you think about the Intel math kernel library, you know what, when we introduced CUDA in eight, uh, 1980, uh, uh, 2008, uh, 2007 actually, um, you know what, uh, we underestimated how much rewriting of the math kernel library that people ha will have to go through. And it took six years to reach 90% of the Intel MKL library for CUDA. And it's one of those, those things that, you know, we start to see that people have been, people are rewriting the libraries to re, I would say, uh, assess all the cost of sequentiality versus locality versus communication cost. The second one is that performance efficiency pressure really can break uh, abstraction. If we don't care about performance, if we don't care about efficiency, Java is great. Java has already solved the problem. You know, it runs on pretty much all the hardware. It's uh, you know, when you write a piece of Java code, it, you can expect it to run on pretty much you know, everything we have today. The only dif the difficulty is it really runs slow, and then if you worry about efficiency, it just cannot get you there. And if we look at even the high performance communities, MPI, OpenMP are the kind of things that um, you know, we use for the, high, the portable high performance applications. We often explicitly handle the hardware uh, centric details in the code. And if you don't believe me, you know, here is a very, very simple, probably the simplest piece of MPI code that I can find uh, that runs on Blue Waters. And this is a, um, a, uh, one of the Fourier transform, non-uniform Fourier transform code that uh, a lot of the uh, scientific uh, applications use. On the left-hand side is the piece of code that if you can write it in pretty much math-oriented language such as Haskell, you will, you will get that piece of code. On the right-hand side, it's the MPI plus open MP code that gets you to run at a reasonable performance on any of the high-end cluster machines today. And um, if you look at the kind of you know, performance you get, it's pretty good. But guess what? Every time we change to a, a different system, this thing needs to be retuned and uh, redeveloped and so on. And I have not mentioned that this piece of code does not use GPUs. So you know what? I can introduce CUDA into this piece of code and blow up the code by another 75%. So, but uh, you know, just kind of give you a sense of you know how programmers are, I would say, enjoying the kind of things that we present to them these days. So here are some interesting trends that uh, I believe will uh, be very, very important for the next, uh, I would say, looking at Yale, uh, maybe the next 30 years. You know, what, uh, when, we, when I give the same talk at Yale's 105, um, I think uh, uh, looking back, some of the things will be probably, uh, you know, be, uh, turn out to be important. One is GPUs, CPUs, and accelerators, or entire nodes are becoming function units today. You know, we really should look at these things as function units. 
The second one is the compute functions. Some of them are huge, some of them are small, are really the new instructions. And um, the distributed execution of functions are going to become very important simply because we need to avoid data movement. So we're going to be shipping these kind of computation around in the uh, so we can, we're going to have accelerators near or near the network I.O., the disk I.O., or the DRAMs, or in the cloud somewhere. And um, some of them will come with its, uh, its own DRAM, SRAM for bandwidth. And what does all this mean? If you look at the picture, we see that CPU, GPUs, accelerators are in, in integrated in the middle. We have you know, these acceleration, big acceleration guys in the, uh, in the bottom. We have the uh, main memory and, uh, with some accelerators on the top, and we have network um, you know, accelerators. One of the things that we would like to do in the future is that when we have some kind of functionality, let's say we want to have a piece of function to analyze a fairly complex large amount of data. We want that piece of data to flow through the I.O. interface. And that data will probably come in with encryption, will probably come in with compression. We want all that decryption, uh, you know, the decompression done right at the network interface before that data flows into some kind of engine that will do the an analytics. And today, it turns out that this is impossible to do without brain surgery on the applications, even in some of the runtime systems. So today, if we use a Linux-based uh, analytic system such as Hadoop, this is kind of what's going to happen. We're going to use the network I.O. to put a DMA to move the data into the DRAM. And then we're going to uh, copy from the I.O. buffer into a compute buffer. and. Hopefully, that compute buffer is memory pinned. Otherwise, we need to do another copy. And then uh, the pinned memory buffer will be transferred back into I.O. interface. The I.O. interface will have that uh, decompression uh, hardware that will do the, com the decompression and then send it right back into the DRAM with DMA again. And the DMA will do another pinned memory copy, and then it will be shipped into the uh, accelerator unit. Every step of these copies diminishes the application perceivable bandwidth, performance, and it exhausts uh, power. So this is pretty much what the uh, application programmers get from us for free. Anything beyond this requires dramatic optimization to their software environment and so on. So this is the kind of job that we're doing today, okay? And I think we have 30 years of time to get this right. And yeah, you know, don't worry, we're gonna have plenty of work to do. So here is a call to action. Um, for those of you who are familiar with, um, you know, computer architecture, um, I highly recommend, uh, you know, to, to go to Barcelona to visit the uh, Sagrada Familia. And then, you know, what? Well, this is also one place that I believe Yale spent some significant amount of time. And uh, I'd like to, you know, what to to recommend. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Yale. Um, so. Here are a few actions that I think we can take. One is we need, need to redefine the system architecture. HSA, not HAS, the auto correction always does it. HSA and CUDA 6.0 is really a, a good step towards in the right direction. The system architecture needs to be much better integrated. Redefine ISA boundary, uh, binary standard. SPEAR, HSA IL, PTX, you know, they're all kind of going in the right direction with the finalizer runtime code generation because this allows us to have one piece of binary code that can run on all kinds of accelerated devices eventually. We're not quite there yet, but we're definitely going in the right direction. Redesigning operating system runtime for data and compute uh, mapping. You know, we, we really need to be able to take these buffers and so on to map them anywhere we need rather than doing all these you know, silly copies. And um, you know what, we currently just don't have that mechanism. And Unix and Linux is way overdue for a revamp for this kind of operation. Provide performance portable domain libraries to sustain abstraction. Libraries used to be the vendor's means to trap application developers in their, um, in, in their hardware family. But in the future, these things are commodity components. And the, you know, the community, we as a community, should produce a truly portable set of libraries to be able to, 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 uh, to re realize the vision of a true compute, distributed compute uh, for energy efficiency and so on. So anyway, congratulations, Yale. 
you know, it's been it's been a long ride, and uh, you know, as I can you, we can show that uh, you know Yale does you know what uh, have a very graceful way of uh, you know what uh, taking the congratulations. But what I uh, most importantly, I think uh, in 30 years when we see each other again, um, you know, uh, we are, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be giving the same talk. For one thing, you know, I, th I think Yale has already you know given up on the uh, hand-drawn pictures. On the other hand, I think um, you know what. There's, if I have to predict one thing 30 years from now, um, I think people will eventually reinvent VT100 terminal, and Yale would uh, probably consider that to be the most important innovation in the next 30 years. Okay, thank you. Yeah.